Hello. In this lesson, you will learn about sequencing, selection, and iteration. This video uses the block mode of the code.org App Lab environment. However, if you would like to learn about this topic in the text mode, check out the video in the upper right hand corner of the screen or click on the link in the video description. One of the criteria for row 5 of the Create Task rubric states that 3C on the written response needs to have a student developed algorithm that includes sequencing, selection, and iteration. We are going to look at all three of these things individually. The Create Task rubric defines sequencing as the application of each step of an algorithm in the order in which the code statements are given. We'll start by looking at this example of sequencing. On line 5, we declare a local variable called num1 and then initialize it to whatever is returned when we prompt the user for a number and ask them enter number 1. Then we declare a second local variable, num2, and initialize it to whatever is returned when we prompt the user for a number with the message enter number 2. Then we declare a third local variable called sum and set it equal to the value of num1 plus num2. Finally, we set the label output equal to the text string the sum is and concatenate that with whatever value is in the sum variable. This algorithm executes these four lines in order to solve the problem, the problem being what is the sum of num1 and num2, and is an example of sequencing. Let's try it out. So we'll press run. We'll say we'll enter num1, 1, enter num2, 4, and then we output the sum is 5. Now let's scroll down and take a look at an example of selection. The create task rubric says selection determines which part of an algorithm are executed based on a condition being true or false. The use of try exception statements is a form of selection statements. If you know what a try exception statement is, good for you, though you probably won't use it in this project. So let's look at this example of selection. So first we have some sequencing here where we ask the user for a number and put it in the variable num3, and then ask him for another number and put it in the variable of num4. Now here's the selection part. We're going to evaluate this Boolean expression, and depending on whether it evaluates to true or false, we're going to execute or not execute this line of code. If the expression num3 is greater than num4 is true, we will run this line of code where we will set the text of this label object to num3 is larger. If this is false, then we'll continue down to the else if and evaluate this Boolean expression. And if this is true that num4 is greater than num3, then we'll set this label to the string num4 is larger. If both this expression and this expression are false, then we'll continue on to the else, and we will set the value of this label to num3 and num4 are equal. So this selection statement is going to determine what direction our program goes and cause it to run different lines of code depending on the values of these Boolean expressions. Let's try this block of code out. We'll press selection. We'll enter num3. We'll say 4. Then we'll enter num4. We'll say 2. So then it says num3 is larger. If you want to learn more about selection statements, such as is and else, check out resource number two in the video description. Let's scroll down to our demonstration of iteration. The create task rubric says iteration is a repetitive portion of an algorithm. Iteration repeats until a given condition is met or a specified number of times. The use of recursion is a form of iteration. You probably won't learn about recursion in this class. Most likely, the iteration you will use in the create task is a for loop or a while loop. Again, we start with some sequencing, these two lines of code here. We declare a variable target and set it equal to whatever is returned by this prompt, which asks the user, calculate the factorial of what number. 
Then we declare a second local variable factorial and initialize it to one. Now here's our iteration. In this case, it's a for loop. We start by declaring var i equals one. This is a counter variable. Before each cycle through the body of the loop, we check is i less than or equal to the value of target. And after each cycle of the loop, we add one to the value of i. Inside the body of the loop, we just set the factorial variable equal to its old value times the variable i. Hypothetically, if the user put in the number 5 when they were prompted, target would be set equal to 5, which would mean the for loop would run 5 times when i was equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So factorial would end up equaling its original value times 1, times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5, which would be 120. Once i hit 6, this Boolean expression would become false and the loop would terminate and would continue on to line 42. The label object would be set to the factorial of 5 is 120. Let's try this out. So iteration, we'll put in the number 5, hit OK. And it tells us factorial of 5 is 120. If you want to learn more about for loops, like this one here, check out resource number four in the video description. Or if you want to learn more about iteration in general, check out resource number three in the video description. In this lesson, you saw individual examples of sequencing, selection, and iteration. For the create task, you're going to have an algorithm that includes all three of these techniques. To learn more about the create task and what you need to do, check out resource number five in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and then leave me a comment down below. To see the next video, click on the image on the left side of the screen. To see the entire playlist for the series, click on the image on the right side of the screen. And to keep up to date on all the latest content, hit the subscribe button in the middle.